this Rattle River when I get there. I have to like really feeling that there's not going to be. Wait, over the other day? No, no. It'll be in four days. You boys excited to do this again? Are we even? What are we doing? I'm walking out the door. I'm taking a video of the sun real quick. I remember the last time I walked out, we couldn't see one. Come on. Are we it's out in the room. What? Oh, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. It was probably the riskiest leap the three had ever taken, quitting their comfortable everyday careers, saying goodbye to their families, and heading off into the woods. This is going to be fun to take these glasses. Oh, you got to see. Maybe you should have got some of them things that you had to strap around your head. A croaky? Who? A croaky. <laughs> The story starts way back in high school. The boys went to school together, ran the streets together, and played sports together, among other close friends as well. After high school, the boys split up for a time while going to college, but they eventually came back home and rekindled their lost relationships. Soon thereafter, they decided to do some section hikes of the Appalachian Trail, a section close to Roan Mountain, Tennessee, Grayson Highlands in Virginia and a section over Mount Washington. This type of lifestyle quickly caught on and the boys eventually decided to through hike the entire trail. How do I open this? The three boys rented a car from the Columbus, Ohio airport, drove to Atlanta. Yeah, we're just doing them? Just doing the anal? What's this guy doing? What's this caravan doing? Eyes up. Oh, you guys see Alamo? We're blue. <laughs> I forgot everything. The boys took a taxi north towards the trail aid stayed one more night in a hotel, and took another taxi to the trailhead. I'll be, I'll be your mother, I'll say be careful. Okay. <laughs> Have a safe drive back. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, these are the three boys, Garrett, Marcus, and Marcus. This is Big Marcus, 
And this is Little Marcus. All right, you're on the Blue Blaze Trail. A lot of blue. You got, All righty. You, you leave that little bit. You're up the top, make sure you got water. All, All righty, thank you. Can you slide this back in there? It was a surreal feeling for the boys to finally be at the beginning of the approach trail and to get their own through hiker tags. Not knowing what they will be getting themselves into, they dove headfirst into the United States' most famous hiking trail. The boys started out with some very easy days, not going many miles. I know. Five days had passed and they found themselves at Neal's Gap, a notorious location for through hikers to quit and hang up their shoes in the large oak tree near the general store. After a night's rest in the Blood Mountain cabins and a good resupply of food for five more days, the boys were off again without hesitation. As anyone would do, the boys dodged inclement weather for as long as they could while there were towns nearby that they could stay in. Wouldn't you know it, there were many other people that wanted to see through hikers complete the trail and help out along the way by cooking up some magic.
Flicking off the states was among some of the best morale boosts that the boys could get. Once they were out of Georgia, it was only a matter of time until the boys saw something that they had seen before from their section hikes. What is this shelter? Um, Muskrat Creek. Cows and stuff and they take them over there. Yeah. And we had to get stay up in the tree and like get a bunch of shit for them and like learn how to like some Game of Thrones type. So no. At least they let us know that there was bears around here. <laughs> okay. That view was just past Carter Gap. We're walking through all these trees right now and the trees opened up to that view. Really foggy because it's been raining for like two days straight. But not, not too bad. You can see the mountains through the fog. Hundred mile mark to uh, Albert Mountain has iconic views of the Appalachian Trail. At the 100 mile mark, it seemed that it might be possible to complete the journey by thinking, we only have to do 21 more 100 mile sections and then we're done. This became the mentality that would last the entire trail. Staying in shelters wasn't really something the boys enjoyed doing, just because the rats kept them up along with the snoring of others. But it did come in handy when the weather didn't cooperate. What was it? The Long Branch Shelter? That was Long Branch. It was a nice one though. I did Long get a breeze. Got also a bar in Lancaster, so that made me feel comfortable. Oh, nice. It's weird, because I feel like we aren't that far from civilization. I know. I don't know how far away Franklin is from here. We're about to be on a city fucking bus. Yeah, it's going to be funny. Seeing things that the boys had seen before was exciting, just because this time they had walked there all the way from the beginning, instead of just driving there and completing a section.
initials from two years ago. Made it to the Nantahala Outdoor Center. Once reaching the NOC in North Carolina, they stayed at what they call Hobo Island. It was just down the road from the Outdoor Center, so they didn't have to pay to stay anywhere, knowing that the next morning, Garrett's girlfriend, Hannah, would be there to slack pack them the next day. Also, Garrett got to hike with his dog, Lily, for the day. Best campsite yet. How many? Lily, we still have like two and a half miles. Sunshine beating on a good time. Moonlight raising from the gray. String band playing worn out honky tonk. Pretty young thing going dancing in the rain. Hi, you lady spitting at the nick of jacks. Business man with a needle and a spoon. Coyote chewing on a cigarette Pack of young boys going howling at the moon Hey darling, sleeping on the black top Hey darling, running through the trees, honey Hey darling, leaving for the next town Lesson my sense catches up with me By the time they entered the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee They started getting into a groove but it also started to feel more like a job at this point. The repetitive feeling of just walking every day started to weigh on the guys. This was always a problem, but maybe they are just too stubborn to quit. Not sure whose will be done, and you can call me a sinner for a wondering why. Hey, darling, sleeping on the black top. Hey, darling, running through the trees, honey. Hey, darling, leaving for the next town, lesson my sense catches up with me. sweeter in this town could it be it's the same as the last I swear i've seen your face elsewhere before just as familiar as a bottle and a glass hey darling sleeping on the black top hey darling running through the trees honey hey darling leaving for the next town lesson my sense catches up with me Hey, darling, sleep. Hiking closer to Gatlinburg, Tennessee was a big story in itself. Gatlinburg was a resupply point for the guys, and they had an incredibly rainy day on the way to the pickup point. With the temperatures falling and weather report filled with snow, they felt a feeling of joy knowing that they would be in town for the night. Getting into Gatlinburg was no easy feat. They got to the road that goes into Gatlinburg, 
and they waited in the tourist bathroom for the shuttle to come pick them up, not knowing that the park had shut down the road. After many calls to the park ranger's office, they finally sent up a shuttle and got the boys and 20 other hikers out of there. With the road still closed the next day, the boys took a zero and rested. After heading back up the trail, the boys got to see the remains of the snowfall that happened in the mountains while they were down in town. Either large geological locations or towns are the best way to really get a good sense of where you are on the trail. Once the boys were about 275 miles in, they hiked into Hot Springs, North Carolina. They ended up staying at the Laughing Hot Hostel, walking downtown to the local restaurant, and ate until they nearly got sick. Hot Springs. Third time here in Carver's Gap. Past Irwin, Tennessee, the boys finally came to the iconic hike around Roan Mountain in Tennessee. This is where they had completed their first ever section. Now they are back for a third time to let it really sink in. I think we were over here somewhere. Oh, yeah, the first time we hiked. After that hike, they stayed at Mountain Harbor Hostel and had a heck of a breakfast the next morning before setting off again. Up past Laurel Falls, the boys stayed at the Dividing Ridge Campground. The boys called the campground and they were there in five minutes to pick them up. 
Sometimes the boys met unbelievably nice people on the trail. This was one of those times. Appalachian Trail. Straight through those people's yards. <laughs> Nearly 500 miles in, the boys found themselves walking into Damascus, Virginia always feeling more a sense of accomplishment with every town they walk into. Once again, they met up with Hannah so she could slack pack them and help them resupply. While waiting for her, they sat and drank beer under a bridge like real hobos. On Buzzard Rock after Damascus, Virginia, and we have an amazing view. Coming up into the Grayson Highlands, the boys ran into the wild ponies. They seem to be a bit more domesticated at this point. <laughs> Oh my god. Anytime the boys were able to, they grabbed a beer. This time being in Atkins, Virginia, where they hoofed a couple of tall boys out to the next campsite. Not long after, a couple of old pals named Parker and Jan came to visit. Just so happens that Parker and Jan came to visit during the Appalachian Trail Days Festival back in Damascus, Virginia. Being nearly a hundred miles north of Damascus, they got picked up, driven back to Damascus, and had an unforgettable time at the festival. Within the next few days, Parker and Jan drove the boys back to where they left off and hiked with the boys up to Burke's garden and hated nearly every second of it. At this point, the boys weren't really enjoying everything like they should have been either.
In and out of Parisburg, Virginia, the boys found themselves a little frustrated. Nearly everyone they had spoken with said that Virginia really flattens out. This, of course, was a complete lie. Near mile 700, approaching some of the best views in Virginia and maybe the whole trail, the boys really soaked it up. Dragon's Tooth, McAfee Knob, and Tinker Cliffs. Of course, they found themselves on McAfee Knob during Memorial Day, so it was packed with regular civilians. Not all the time, but sometimes the boys got a fire going, mostly just to keep the bugs away, but it was something to do and was always relaxing for them just to sit around. 
Meeting other vagabonds was always a treat, just to see what they do and how they live. In this case, a fellow with a short bus converted into a home gave them a ride to the Devil's Backbone Brewery, where they camped for the night. But not before they ate and drank at the brewery, of course. Wouldn't you know it, Hannah came to visit and help out again after the boys reached Waynesboro, Virginia. It was always a nice treat when the boys had visitors, but made it hard to go back out and hike when they knew they could just get in the car and go home. Going through the Shenandoahs was enjoyable for the boys, not too tough and kind of touristy, which means there was some trail magic and places to get some real food. Just before Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, the roller coaster started. It was not a fun time for the boys to go up and down 11 times in 13 and a half miles, but once they got through it, they knew they had a zero day coming up in Harper's Ferry at mile 1025. It wasn't long until the boys were in the dreaded state of Pennsylvania. At the true halfway point in Pine Grove Furnace State Park, they had to attempt the famous half-gallon challenge, eating a half-gallon of ice cream as fast as you can. As you can imagine, the boys didn't go much further that day. I don't know if this looks possible. I'm going to be here for a while. Well, that's good. I got kind of warm water, so I just put it in my mouth and try to swallow the biggest <laughs> chunk of ice cream I can. It hurts, but it goes down. Oh, dude, I can't swallow that. That's a piece of fucking chocolate. West Virginia, 
There's a bullfrog in here. They live in that? Where? They live uh, in that. They like that? I think so. I think that's what they like. Go for it. I don't give a shit. That is so far away. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dude, that thing crumbled. It turned into dust. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Going up on the bridge. Land bridge. Pennsylvania really wasn't terrible for the first half, but then it gave the boys some of the worst days of their lives, starting with the beaver dammed creek that made a mess of the trail followed by some of the rockiest trail you have ever seen. That went on for over a hundred miles. I'm pretty sure that's Marcus right there, rolling down the road. Super ready to get out of Pennsylvania. Delaware Water Gap could not have come soon enough. Pennsylvania had left the boys feeling defeated. Once they got into New Jersey, it was night and day difference. There were still rocks on the trail, but not anywhere near the amount that was in Pennsylvania. Sweating so bad. I'm drunker. <laughs> Holy <laughs> guys. I'm I'm high sweating. Wow. <laughs> I 
I said, Bo, Get back, that's my brother. Older brother. He's biracial, right? My mom say we got the same dad. We know we got the same dad. We know. Come brother. Uh-oh. Sticking his snout in here? Yeah, he's snouting out. It was about this time, mile 1370, that Garrett and Big Marcus got rid of the cooking stove and started cold soaking ramen noodles. It was bittersweet, but the two boys were looking to lighten their load a bit before the trail got much harder. Yo, come here. Oh, mangy bastard. That's one of the most amazing things I've seen, I think. It's so hard to make out on this camera. See a little bit of the buildings out there. Coming down off of Bear Mountain in New York was a bit odd for the boys. It happened to be a weekend and there were a ton of regular civilians down there just having picnics. It looked like something big was going on right before the boys entered the famed zoo that Appalachian Trail goes through. Looking like dirty hobos and smelling like dead animals, they must have hiked by a hundred people. It smells like a skunk around here. Oh, that's Red Fox. Sometimes they found themselves in weird situations, like this time they had run in with a cult in the woods, making all sorts of weird noises and keeping the boys up all night. Just like any other day, the boys moved on. At this point, the states really started clicking off once entering Connecticut.
to go to the main room. <laughs> but I would, I would kill every night in the in, a, in, a, in an audience like that. I'll get a stand ovation because. I The Connecticut-Massachusetts border was really enjoyable, following a long stream of deep waterfalls, then everything just got straight up hot. One day it was 80 degrees by 8 in the morning. Luckily, the hottest day was a short one for the boys as they went into the great Barrington, Massachusetts for the night. After the boys got a little further into Massachusetts, Hannah came and visited now for a fourth and final time near Cheshire, Massachusetts, and slack-packed them all the way into Vermont near mile 1600. Vermont was somewhat of a smooth hike for being up north, going up ski resorts, seeing many ponds on top of mountains, and an increasing amount of pine trees. Going south over Killington.
Hitting the border between Vermont and New Hampshire, it was another one of those times that the boys felt out of place. Making their way through Hanover, New Hampshire, the hometown of Dartmouth College, they were getting all sorts of weird looks. Luckily, New Hampshire at least tries to build you up before it gives you the real tough mountains. It's nice, but regardless, it still sucked for the boys. Going up and over by that little tower in a few hours. where you come up and then see the cut out through the woods where you walk. Well, I see it, but you see the south peak right there. Yeah, that's where we came up. Oh. And then we, we walked I don't remember up. going down at all. No, 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 we came up right at the bottom of the We came south up at the bottom of the south peak. Oh. Oh, because that's what the sign was pointing. Yeah. I see. When getting into Lincoln, New Hampshire, all three of the boys got one last pair of shoes to last them the rest of the trail. Then they went up and ascended from the Franconia Ridge to Mount Lafayette. I got it! 
Huh? Oh yeah. Then, a few days later, they encountered Mount Washington, which is where we started you off in the beginning. The boys did not want to stay in the Appalachian Mountain Club huts, so they ascended Mount Washington in one day, took the shuttle down, stayed in Gorham for a night, took the shuttle back up the next morning, and slacked the rest of the way down the presidential mountain range. It was a near-perfect day to finish up the presidentials, Uh, drivers would have to stop and use levers to get the wagon wheels up over the rocks. After machines, the uh, big piston buoy. Sure, it takes a lot to redo the road. Self camps in the uh, Alpine zone, which was unintentional. It was like it was dark. I didn't. Looking back to Mount Washington was always an enjoyable sight. Seeing all the mountains they had just climbed was always a bit of a morale boost, 
which was needed quite often at this point. You see what I'm saying? Mm hmm That looks crazy. What a joke. Soon thereafter, the boys hit the main border at mile 1910. Knowing they were in for a rude awakening, they moved forward toward the Mahusak Notch. Known as the toughest mile on the Appalachian Trail, it took the boys about an hour to go that mile, but they certainly enjoyed each other's company while going through it. There's, there's snow down here. There's ice. No way. I swear to God, dude. Oh, you're freezing to death if you fall in the and you hurt. Look, there's snow down there. Fucking there's so much ice and snow down there. Fucking snow dogs, baby. Oh my God. Look over here, brother. That's amazing. Mahusik Notch was just down there and we had a very steep climb afterwards. Not every day is a perfect day, especially in Maine, but the great abundance of wild blueberries always makes things a little better. Inland Maine doesn't have much to offer, so the boys stayed at more hostels while in Maine. This hostel was by far the coolest thing they had ever seen. Right, dude. I can't 
can't see. Maine is such an amazing and beautiful place. The mountains don't look any tougher than the ones down south, but the trail is routed through the hardest parts of the mountain ranges, which makes it more rewarding once at the top. Stratton, Maine was the last real stop the boys took before reaching the end of the trail. They got resupplied at the convenience stores along the way, but no more laundry was done and no more showers were taken. Harrison's Pierce Pond Sport Camp was a favorite stop along the way. Tim, the owner, is a true outdoorsman and a very nice man. He allowed the boys to reserve some spots for a big pancake breakfast, only a tenth of the mile from the trail.
Maine is filled with many rivers and streams that require hikers to ford. However, the Kennebuck River is a dangerous river to ford, so the Appalachian Trail has a designated ferry to cross the river so long as you get there on time. That's so cold, dude. Just before the 100 mile wilderness, the boys stopped in Monson, Maine at mile 2077 to grab a quick resupply, charge their electronics, and get a bite to eat. Then straight back out into the wilderness the same day. the trail. The 100 mile wilderness may sound difficult, but in reality, it is no different than any other part of the trail. There are still roads that cut through the trail, and the boys even ran into some trail magic on two separate occasions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least the rocks aren't very slippery. And at least my socks get cleaned off.
Whoa. Oh, <laughs> about a board. Yeah, these things are slippery. Socks are clean. Without warning, Hannah showed up again to surprise the boys one last time in the 100-mile wilderness. She brought food and snacks just as the boys started rationing their last pieces of candy. She also brought some baby wipes so the boys could take a dip in a pond and clean up since they hadn't had a shower in nine days. She even got to enjoy camping during the last few good days the boys had in May. Drove a Series 10 Cadillac and wore a cigar on his lip. Don't you know the devil wears a suit and tie? Told him driving down the 61 in early July. Wild as the cotton field and sharp as a knife. I heard him howling as he passed me by. Getting closer to Mount Katahdin, the northern terminus of the Appalachian Trail, seeing it up close and personal was a relieving feeling for the boys. After camping at Abal Pines Campground, the boys made their way to Katahdin Stream Campground, just five miles before the summit of Mount Katahdin. There they got their own shelter, picnic table, and fire ring. Since the boys got to the campground early, they decided to call a shuttle and drive to Bangor, Maine. Knowing that they would be driving a rental car home, they decided to get the rental car a day early. So on the last day, all they would have to do is summit Mount Katahdin, hike down, get in the car, and make their way home. So, that's what they did. On the way up the next day, the boys didn't know what to think other than what they were going to do when they got home and how exciting it will be.
At the top, once they saw that sign, it was a feeling of sadness and accomplishment. They had come all that way just for this. Now that they're here, there's nothing left to do. Make sure I leave nothing but my virginity up here. I think I'm ready to go home. On the way back down, it seemed as if they didn't even reflect on what they just accomplished. But then again, maybe it hadn't hit them yet. Once down from the mountain, they hopped in the car and drove to Portland, Maine, where they stayed one last night together and made sure to grab a lobster roll plus a few beers. It became sadder for the boys once they were collecting their belongings out of the car. They had been with each other for 158 days, nearly half a year. Getting back home to rural Ohio was a feeling of bittersweet, not wanting to enter real life again, but also not wanting to just walk every day. This 2200 mile adventure was the boys' rite of passage, a vision quest, a life-changing experience. Never again will the boys be able to experience this type of camaraderie and struggle as the time they hiked the Appalachian Trail in their mid-twenties. Would anyone? <laughs>